In a previous analysis, I found out that the price of Bitcoin measured by the value of this ETF, GBTC, is influenced by the prices of gold, silver, and treasuries. And in this previous analysis, I did not use any lag in the analysis. Now I want to create lag data so that I can make certain decisions. And what I want to do is a lag data uh, analysis where the lag is three days. And the predictors in this lag analysis will be gold, silver, and treasuries as long as they are not collinear. And uh, the criterion or the main uh, predicted variable would be GBTC or the price of Bitcoin. And I want a three-day lag analysis because I want to be able to uh, simulate a situation where I see the price of, say, gold at the end of one day. Then I have another day to uh, place a order for uh, Bitcoin and then uh, in the third day the result will be the one that my lagged analysis would suggest. So how do I create lag data? So this is a data set and as you can see it's time series data so I have one date as uh, a column. Um, to create a, a three-day lag data where the, the, uh, the, the predicted variable is GBTC, is so the price of Bitcoin, I'm going to copy this data with the dates, and I copy it here to the beginning. And Oh, actually, I just moved the data here, but that's okay. Uh, so the lag data would be uh, after three days. So this, for example, is the value in, uh, in at a particular date. Three days after, I have this value for the price of Bitcoin. So what I want is to get this shifted data. So what I'm going to do is just to select that area and copied it in a shifted way. Now this data here is lagged. This is a three-day lag. I don't need the date column anymore because I'm going to read this into War PLS so I don't need that. That date column would create problems. So now I have my data set where this predicted variable is lagged and as you can see at the end here, I lost uh, a couple of rows of data. I could leave these empty cells to be filled in with uh, a missing data imputation algorithm. What I'm going to do is just delete these rows where I have missing data. So this is my data, my lagged data. So I read the lag data into uh, a project file, a WarPLS project file, so uh, I can see the lag data. And now, so now I'm, gonna, I'm going to create a model where my main dependent variable will be the lagged GPTC. And I will have three predictors. One will be gold, GLD, which is an ETF that tracks the price of gold. Silver. And 
and uh, treasuries the TLT which is a long-term treasuries uh, ETF These are my predictors, so I'm going to create direct links between them and my Bitcoin variable. Save the model and close. Uh, I'm going to set this uh, analysis um, initially to a linear analysis. I'm going to use robust path analysis because this is essentially a path model. I don't have any any of the variables. None of the variables here is measured through more than one ind indicator. So it's only one indicator per latent variable. So th this is essentially a path model. It's actually a multiple regression model. Now I'm going to run my analysis. This is a linear analysis. Software is telling me that there is a lot of collinearity. So I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to take the collinearities between gold and treasuries. So they're very highly correlated. I can see through this correlation coefficient. I'll just, I'll just uh, close this and continue with my analysis with those variables. Another thing we're going to notice is that so these two here are collinear and another way of uh, seeing this is going to view latent variable coefficients and look at these full collinearity variance inflation factors. None of these numbers should be greater than 10 as, and as we can see we have two they are greater than 10 because they are collinear, these two variables, gold and treasuries. Now, since gold is a better predictor than treasuries, but these coefficients are distorted by the collinearity, but since gold is higher, I will keep gold and I will remove treasuries from my analysis. Now, I don't want to group the two of them because then it defeats the purpose of having a predictor that I can use to make investment decisions. Right. So I'm not going to group the two of them into a sort of an index. I'm going to just remove one of them from my analysis. So I'll go back to define model. I will delete treasuries from my analysis. So now I have two predictors. And now I'll rerun the analysis and here as we can see, the real predictor is gold. Silver doesn't do much in terms of predicting the price of uh, Bitcoin. Now, this is positive and linear. This may be a bit of an illusion, though, because this is a completely linear analysis. In most of these relationships among uh, variables tend to be nonlinear uh, in financial uh, uh, instruments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to settings and change this uh, analysis to warp 3, which allows me to identify S-curves or if uh, an S-curve is not found, it defaults to a U-curve or an inverted U-curve. Uh, and if that is not found, then linear. So I change that. Now I'll redo my analysis. And you see, as I changed it to nonlinear, I can see that gold, uh, three days before the price of Bitcoin, is a much stronger predictor of the price of Bitcoin. And in doing the analysis nonlinear, the price of silver becomes non-significant with respect to Bitcoin. So gold is the key. Now, I'm going to take a look at the graph of that relationship between gold and Bitcoin, which is warped. And as I can see, it's more of an inverted uh, J-curve or inverted U-curve, part of the curve. And I'm going to go to the option, view relationship graphs um, with segments. And uh, I'm going to look at the unstandardized scales option. And I get a lot of segments here. I'm going to change the settings 
to I'm going to change this absolute effect segmentation data to a higher value than I had before, which was 0.1. So this should give me fewer segments and a clearer view of the relationship. And this is the important part that I wanted to emphasize. As you can see, gold, is, gold with a, a three-day lag is a good predictor of the price of Bitcoin but only up to a certain value of gold. In fact, the, the best range for prediction is this one here. So with GLD, the ETF that tracks the price of gold, going from 119 to 134. After that, particularly after 139, the relationship between gold and Bitcoin becomes negative. So you, you, if you if you start investing in Bitcoin based on increases uh, in in price of gold after this level here for the GLD, you're going to end up losing money uh, because the price of Bitcoin would tend to go down. So that's a negative relationship. So what you want is to be in this range. This is the range of prices of gold from 119 or GLD, the ETF that tracks gold. These are this is the ranges where 119 to 134, where you uh, you can actually uh, expect to invest in gold uh, as gold prices go up, and then three days or more after, uh, you should see a move in the price of Bitcoin. And this concludes this demo.